Firstly, we will read from the book of Jude. The book of Jude. You know that Jude is not divided into chapters. Have you noticed that? Okay, so we're going straight to verse 20. And it says, maybe you should read it for me first. Can you read what you have there? Want to go. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves. He didn't say that God would do it for you. He said you have to do it yourself. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Now, there's a big difference between what you have here and uh, what you've got in 1 Corinthians chapter number 14. Can we look at that for a moment? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I read from verse 2 to verse 4. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto God, for no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. In the spirit he speaketh what? But he that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. And that's very important. Okay, I hope we can talk about that. Verse 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. But he that prophesied edifieth the church, edifieth himself. Now, the word edify here where it says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself the word edify means to build yourself up it also means to charge yourself okay but there is a, a slight difference uh, not so slight it's it is a difference an important difference really between what it says here and what you have in the first place that I read to you in the book of Jude, verse 20, where it says, But ye, beloved, building up your zeros on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. This time, he is talking about building a superstructure. Building a superstructure. Now, what's a superstructure? In architecture, superstructure is um, the part of the building above the foundation. 
okay? After you've built a foundation, the foundation usually is hidden, okay? It's covered, and then you have this other one that comes above the foundation. That's what we call the superstructure. So what he's telling you is, you're building on something that's already there. So he says, and ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, meaning that that most holy faith that he's referring to is already there. Now you're building on that one. Now what does it mean your most holy faith? What's the meaning of your most holy faith? It means your highest faith, your most sanctified faith. It means the topmost level of faith that you have attained at any given time. You know, we experience our faith at different levels from time to time. Sometimes we experience very high faith and we can do big things. And some other times our faith seems to go just uh, a little lower than usual. Okay? Now he says, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. So you build on that highest level of faith that you attained. You build on that one so that you don't come lower next time. When you build from there on, that will become the benchmark. The next time, that will become your lowest faith. So your highest faith becomes your lowest faith. Then you operate from there. You get to another high level of faith. And then you build on it. He says, and ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. How? He says, by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. That's the way to build yourself on your most holy faith. Now you see, he didn't say, get faith. Faith comes by hearing the word. When you hear the word, faith comes to you. When you hear the word, faith comes to you. You can increase your faith by hearing more. But that doesn't mean that you're going to stabilize at that level of faith. Now he's talking about stabilizing at that topmost level of faith that you have attained by praying in the Holy Ghost. The more you pray in the Holy Ghost, the more seasoned you are at your topmost level of faith. Oh, come on here. Are you getting it? You know, when we hear the word faith comes to us, so we get strong inside us. And sometimes when we face the crisis of life, our faith just goes down as though we never had it. But it says, hey, when you receive faith and your faith now comes to a high peak, he says, build on it. Build on it by praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, boy. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. You ready to pray in the Holy Ghost right now? <laughs> Let's take a few minutes and pray in the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what to do. Hold on, hold on. Hey, hold on first. Don't take off yet. Hold on. I want to tell you what to do. You're going to sit right where you are. Don't stand up. Okay? You just sit down. Then I don't want you to speak too loud. Okay? Try your best for the person next, sitting next to you not to hear what you're saying. But make sure you are talking. You get it? Okay, can I get a chair? I got to do this too. Okay, this one's all right. You ready? Can I sit on it? Okay, thank you. Let's go. Oh, glory to God. All right, go ahead. Don't look at me now, just talk in tongues.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How was it? I said, how was it? Did you enjoy that? You enjoyed it, right? You know, I hear a lot about people who they do fasting for 100 days, fasting for 30 days, fasting. I wish they would just pray in tongues. <laughs> They'd be amazed. What the fasting will not do for 200 days. This kind of praying will do. Hallelujah. He says, let's look at it again, what that scripture tells us. He says, but ye, beloved, verse 20, the book of Jude, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I said it means building a superstructure. The Greek word actually is a poikodomio, meaning to build on something that already exists. So Paul tells us what to build on. You see, he tells us what is that thing that already exists that we should build upon. He says, your most holy faith. When you receive faith through the word and your faith is burning and working, don't let it go down. Build on it. Let that become your lowest faith. Your present highest faith becomes the lowest faith because you build on it. You stabilize there. You can now use it anytime. But if you don't build on it, you'll be that kind of a person who remembers. Oh, there was one time my faith was really high and I did this and I did that. Um, then, so where is that faith? Well, I don't know. You know, sometimes up and sometimes down. See, but God doesn't want you sometimes up and sometimes down. So he says, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Okay, that's one good thing, right? That you can work on, you can act on it, you can live by it, and watch your life grow remarkably. All right, another thought. Ready for another thought? Okay, now you remember in the book of Joshua, chapter number one, and uh, verse eight, Joshua chapter one, verse eight. It's a scripture that uh, most of you have learned all your life. I want to look at some things there. He says, this, verse 8, this book of the law. Now, you know, at that time, it was the book of the law they got. Now, we have the whole Bible, all right? Okay. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Notice, notice. Now, when you hear me say, keep saying it. Don't stop talking it. It's important. Look at it. He says, this book shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now, I always like to point out to God's people that it didn't say shall not depart out of thy heart. Because that's not the problem. He's, he's dealing here with success. He says, if you want to be successful, the word must be in your mouth. It can be in your heart and you'll not be successful. He's talking about being successful here, winning, winning, being victorious. He says, look, it's got to be in your mouth. That means you've got to talk it. That's why many nice Christians 
with the word in their heart. Supposedly, because I can prove to you that the word is not in their heart, really. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If they actually had it inside, it'll come out. But it's not coming out because it's not inside. And they're pretending they got it on the inside. Somebody said, Pastor Chris tells people to just keep talking it. He doesn't tell them to keep it inside. Well, because you can't talk it consistently until it is first inside your heart. Come on, what are you talking about? Okay, let's look at this. You'd see it here now. It's right there. He says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. Did you see that? But thou shalt meditate. Oh, 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 glory to God. Ah! Meditate. And you know, he uses the word Hagar. There's a reason for God choosing the word Hagar for meditate. Hagar here is not the kind of meditation that you go like this. Ah, <laughs> uh-uh. There's a level of Hagar that he's talking about. Because he says it should not get out of your mouth. It ought to be there. Well, let's look at it. I said, if you, <laughs> only talking Christians win in life. <laughs> Don't you forget that. Talking Christians, they're the ones that win in life. They just keep talking. I'm a victor, not a loser. <laughs> a victor, not a failure. Always talking. Every time they're alone. <laughs> I'm walking in the light. I'm walking in the light as he's in the light. We've got fellowship one with another. In the name of Jesus, I walk in the light of God. Amen. Success in my spirit. Victory in my spirit. Talking Christians. Talking Christians. The ones that, listen. <laughs> the ones that don't talk that way, they may look nice, but things aren't going well, believe me. You can't, you can't talk like this and be poor. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter that you were born poor. You would know you were not born to be poor. <laughs> See that? You may have been born sick, but if you talk like this, you would come out victoriously. Oh yeah. This is the way of success. God is concerned about our success. He put us here for that. Hallelujah. 